In this video of C Sharp Basics, we're going to talk about scope and statements. You can easily identify the scope by looking for the curly braces. So here on namespace basic.course.writing your first code, we have an open and closed curly brace. Then everything inside of that open and closed curly brace is called the namespace scope because this code belongs to the namespace. Then once again, inside of the static class program, we see an open and closed curly brace. So everything within the open and closed curly brace is part of the class scope. Then one last time, we see the static void main has an open and closed curly brace after it. And everything inside of the open and closed curly brace then is part of the method scope. Now let's look at statements. Statements can be easily identified by their semicolon. And every time that you write code, you need to terminate your statements with a semicolon. Here we see in our application, we've got two semicolons, one that follows our console.write line and one that follows our console.read line. This tells your compiler that this is the end of each statement. Because the semicolon is the terminator of our statement, we can do some fairly unique things with the way that we write our code. For example, here we have the same exact application written in a slightly different manner, but it will run and compile exactly the same way. Here we've moved write line and read line down to a new line. Some people like to write their code this way because it helps to separate the objects from their methods and properties. Now we will get into what properties and methods are at a later time, but just understand that sometimes stylistically, this is something that's very much desired. And as you can see, what's really telling the compiler what the end of our statement is, are these still remaining semicolons. Instead of coming after console, they come after the dot write line and dot read line. So the compiler will read both the console and the dot write line as one statement, then go to the next line and read console dot read line as another statement. Let's take a look at a demonstration of scope and statements. So here we have our Visual Studio application window open, and we can see that inside of the namespace basic.course.writing your first code, we have an open curly brace and a closed curly brace. Everything inside of those two curly braces is part of the namespace scope. Then once again, inside of the static class program, we have another open curly brace and a closed curly brace. Everything inside of the open and closed curly brace for the static class is then considered part of the class scope. And finally, here we have a method called static void main, which has an open curly brace and a closed curly brace. Then everything inside of that is then considered part of the scope of the method. Stylistically, this is the most common way that you'll see classes laid out on your screen in the code window. There's a lot of indentation in spaces to make things easily legible. You could, however, make things a little bit different. You can see here, everything is on one line and we can still go ahead and compile and run this code. Let's try that. Here we can still see our Hello World application is running just fine. And if I hit the Enter key, we exit out of the application. So you can have your code written all on one line, but clearly this would not be the easiest way to read or write your code. Another thing that we can do syntactically to make our code look a little bit more legible is we can drop the write line and the read line down to new lines after the console object. For some people, this is much more legible and easy to read because it separates the object name of console from the method name of write line 